All right, so here's my weekly update of my portfolio with Questrade. So I've got a total equity of 105,843 Canadian right now sitting with Questrade. I've got 80 cash and 25 is invested in equities, either options or stocks. Now, I definitely want to invest the 80 cash, but I just don't know what to invest in. I don't trust anything. I'm afraid that we get another market crash. I want to have some cash available to buy some more stocks. Obviously, that's not the right approach because that cash that I'm using is not gaining anything. And who knows if we have another market crash or not. But I just haven't decided how I want to invest it, what, which approach I want to take that would allow me to be to feel safe in case we get another market crash or even a bear market of three or five years. I definitely want a dollar cost average. So if I buy anything, I wanna make sure that I have enough to buy more of it in case it drops. So let's go through my accounts. I've got a margin account, TFSA, RSP, and RESP. So my margin account, I mainly use it to sell options. My TFSA account right now is mainly for dividend stocks. My RSP right now is mainly for covered calls and maybe some growth stocks. RSP right now, is covered calls but i'm thinking of changing it up as well so if i start off with my margin account i've got total cash of 5877 us my market value is negative 2328 so if i go through my positions they're option selling strategies so it's a trade that i open which generates cash i collect premium i keep this premium only if the option trade expires worthless otherwise i have to buy it back to close the trade Hopefully I buy it back for less than what I collected. So I've got this Adobe put spread at 465, 460 expiring February 19. So basically for me to win on this trade, for me to keep the premium that I collected from this trade, Adobe needs to stay above 465 by February 19. I collected, I think about $1.40. I'll try to close it for 70 cents before that if I can. See, it has 67 days to go. Got an Amazon put spread expiring January 15. I've got the 3,005, 3,000 strike. So basically I keep the premiums that I collected from this this, which I think was $1.50 if Amazon stays above 3005 by January 15. So when I say $1.50, it's per contract and one contract represents 100 shares. So it's actually $150. I've got an Amazon, another Amazon put spread expiring December 18. So next week at the same strikes, 3005, 3000. I basically keep the premium of a dollar here as long as Amazon stays above 3005 by December 18. I've got a Baba put spread expiring February 19. So this was a rolled trade. This is a trade that I had, I think, back in November. And I, I just keep rolling it to survive just to avoid losing on it. So right now I've got a 255, 250 strike expiring February 19. And I guess this one, I'm not really collecting anything. This is just to avoid a losing trade. So this, if this expires worthless, I get to avoid losing money on it. That's basically it. I need BABA to stay above 255 by February 19, which should be fair, but BABA has taken a, a respectable drop in the past few months. I've got Beyond Meat, a put spread at 120. This seems safe. I mean, 120 strike after it dropped uh, after earnings. I could have gone lower, but my entry was at 120, 115, and I think Beyond Meat's trading at around um, 137 right now. Uh, but I basically keep my premium collected of $1.05 or $1.08 as long as Beyond Meat stays above 120 come January 15. I've got a put spread on CRM at 225, so same same concept. I keep the premium that I collected from this trade as long as CRM stays above 225 come January 8. I think CRM is below 225 right now, so it actually needs to move up a little bit. I've got a naked put on Fubo TV. So I sold it for $1.50 at a 20 put. So as long as Fubo stays above 20 come January 15, I keep the premium. Or I can try to close the trade as Fubo goes up or as time goes by and Fubo stays above 20. I think right now Fubo is at 27. I've got a lemonade put spread at 65.60. So same concept. As long as lemonade stays above 65 come January 15, I keep the premium of a dollar. Lemonade, I think, is trading in the 90s right now. So I'm pretty far away, but I saw I still have a lot of time to go 32 days and anything can happen, right? The stock can decide to, to take a hard drop and maybe not recover. I've got an NVIDIA put spread at 475, 470, expiring January 15. So I keep the premium collected of a dollar as long as, as NVIDIA stays above 475 come January 15 got another one expiring this week at a 480 470 so this was a trade that i tried to save as well so this i don't make anything if if this one expires worthless this was just me trying to save an older trade that 
I would have lost, I think, $300 on. So by rolling it to December 18 at these strikes, I was able to save it and lose nothing, win nothing and lose nothing. But as long as NVIDIA stays above 480. So right now NVIDIA is at 520. Let's just hope it stays like that. We've got four days to go. I've got an RH put spread. This I opened for earnings and then I didn't like it. So I rolled it before earnings was announced. So I rolled it to 415, 410 for January 8th. And I think I collected a total credit a little bit over a dollar. And I basically win on this trade as long as RH stays above 415 above, uh, by January 8th. I think RH right now is trading at 428. So it's pretty close. It needs to come back up or at least uh, not drop anymore. It did take a big drop. I've got a snowflake put spread. This one I like. I think it's a good entry. I hope it becomes a winner. It's this week, expires this week at a 310, 305 strike. Uh, basically, I need it to stay above 310 by December 18. Snowflake is, a, is at uh, 350, trading in the 350s right now. So I keep the $100 as long as Snowflake stays above 310. I have a put spread on Splunk, I believe. SPLK expiring January 15 at a 140 strike. I think it's trading in the 150s right now. I basically did this trade after earnings, after the stock dropped a lot after earnings said to myself, well, it's expected to come back up a little bit. It's not going to keep dropping like this. So I went with the put spread at 140. And as long as it stays above 140 by January 15, I keep my premium of $1.05, basically the 307 minus the 202. Got a Tesla put spread for this week, for this Friday at 525.15. I think I collected a dollar. Yeah, a dollar, 992 minus 892. And I get to keep the premium as long as Tesla stays above 520 by uh, this Friday, and I think Tesla's at 600, low 600s right now. And look at this, if I had done a naked put, if I just sold the 520 put and not bought the 515 put for protection, could have collected $992 instead. Obviously the capital required to place a naked put is much higher, but you would be collecting more premiums and it decays fast. I would be already up $174. My max profit from this put spread that I did is a dollar. But if I had done the naked put, I would have already made more than my max profit from the put spread. So sometimes going naked is interesting. I've got a Unity put spread. This one I like as well. I think it's a good entry. 115, 110, pretty far. Current market price is uh, 150. As you can see, the premiums have gone up a little bit. So I sold it for 405. It's worth 460. So if I had done a naked put on this one, I'd be losing a little bit. But it's uh, the put spread is worth about it. I sold it for a collected 95 cent net credit of 95 cents. I think it's worth a, a little bit over a dollar right now. But as long as Unity software stays above 115 come January 15, I make money on this trade. And basically, I think Unity is in the 150s right now. I've got Visa 195. Visa needs to stay above 195 by January 15. I think I collected 90 cents. Yeah, I collected 90 cents on this trade. I think Visa is above 200 right now. I've got VMware. I've got two put spreads on VMware. I opened them one before earnings and then I think one after earnings. So this one's after earnings. That's why my short strike is pretty far, 130. But then the December 18 one, that's not doing too well. It's got a 140 strike and I think VMware is trading exactly at 140. So, and it expires this Friday. So based on how the week starts, if it's, if it starts moving up 141, 142, I'll, I'll leave it. But if it drops, I'm going to have to roll it to maybe January 15. I, I don't think I can hold on to it like this. It's too close for comfort. And I've got Zoom put spread finally. I don't think my entry was good on Zoom because Zoom dropped to 380 and I'm only 40 points away, but I have to go all the way to January 15. So I've got 32 days to go. Collected $2 out of this put spread. It's 10 point wide, not five points. I collected $2, so $200. And I basically win as long as Zoom stays above 340 by January 15. But obviously, we we don't know what's going to happen. It could possibly drop below 340 and it could possibly move higher. I really don't know, but that's the risk. And that's why I go out of the money to give myself some breathing room to win on the trade. So this is an old stock that I bought when I used to do penny stocks. And I was with CIBC, actually. And when I transferred my TFSA from CIBC to Questrade, this came along, but I can't remove it. If anyone knows how to remove a line a position that you just never did anything with and it just got delisted, kind of annoying. I don't want to. I don't want to keep seeing this. So if you want, anyone knows how to get rid of this, leave it in the comment section below. So the rest of my positions in my TFSA, they're all dividend stocks except for goals. I've got Bell, as you can see. I've got dividends coming up December 14. 
it's up $52. I've got Bank of Nova Scotia up $264. I put in $1,000 in each of these positions. I've got Choice Properties up $65. I've got Gold that's down $44. I've got Manulife that's up $213. I've got MMP which is up $258. I've got Realty Income which is up $26. I've got Pizza Pizza which is up $51. Rio Can up $246. I've got AT&T up $94 and TD up $142. So these stocks I'm just holding for dividends, collecting dividends. They get deposited in my TFSA account, which I can use to buy more stocks. But now that everything's up, I don't want to buy at a higher price. I'm just looking for other things that I can buy cheaper. I would, I'm ready to buy more of these stocks if they drop by more than 10% TD especially. I think I had an order on TD. I had a good till cancel order to buy more TD in case it drops more than 10%, but then it decided to go to move up. I would buy more gold if it drops by more than 10% from my original purchase price. So in my RSP, I've got one SPAC here, Oak Tree Acquisition. This one is expected to merge with Hems and Hers. Um, up $164, I only bought 100 shares. I put in $1,000 worth. And then I've got two covered calls. I've got Rocket and Virgin Galactic. Basically just trying to collect premiums from selling at the money calls. So I bought the stock at 21.6 and I'm selling call options at 21.5 as much as I can, as much as it's possible. I think if this one expires this week, I'll be able to sell another one because as you can see, Rocket is at 20.86. So it's below my strike of 21.5. So my call option that I sold will expire worthless. And I'll get to sell another one. I'll probably sell it on Friday. I'm not going to wait till it expires completely. I'll sell it. I'll buy back. I'll buy this one back for maybe a, a few cents. And then I'll sell another one. Um, same strike probably. Maybe to, to next week or maybe a month out. I'm not sure yet. I'll probably do one month out. And then Virgin Galactic. This one same concept. Except that this one the stock flew. So now it's going to be harder to collect premiums from the at the money strike of 23 which I started with. So by buying back this call option, which I'm down $400 and selling this, the, ne the next expiry at the same strike, I could do it for a credit, but it, it will be for a smaller credit than what I started off with. When, when the credit becomes not worth it, then I'm just gonna close my shares completely, close my trade completely by in one trade by basically buying back the call option and selling the shares at the same time. So what I lose in the call option I make up in the share appreciation, my true profit on this trade becomes the call premiums that I've been collecting. So if I go to orders executed and filter on uh, SPCE, so these call premiums that I'm collecting, that's my profit on these on this trade. It's not going to be the uh, capital, the share appreciation because I sold a call option at a 23 strike. So that caps my selling price at 23 but as long as i keep it in one trade the fact that i'm down this much on my call option is compensated by my profit from the shares and then my resp finally i've got a cover call on intel but not doing so well because i bought it at 56 and intel's at 49 it came up to 52 i think last week or the week before and now it's back down to 49.7 I just want to get out of this trade. I just want Intel to come back up to 56. I'm going to close this trade and then I'm going to look for other trades to do. I'm not too sure what I want to do yet. I might do, I think I'll do covered calls, but on smaller underlyings, underlyings that are trading in, in the 20s. So either I'll do that. I don't think I'll be doing dividends in my RESP. So either I'm going to be doing covered calls on small underlyings or I also thought about doing maybe a cover call on Walmart, but I don't want to put $15,000 in one stock or e even in Facebook. I don't want to put $27,000 either. Anyways, this is the RSP. I don't have $27,000 in it. Could probably do it in my RRSP, but the problem with covered calls is that you have to buy 100 shares. And if something goes bad with that stock, then it's going to impact you a lot. The other thing I'm considering in my RESP is just to buy these growth stocks, take the risk, put in $1,000 in each of these growth stocks, and just wait it out. Also thinking of buying Box. I had it in my margin account before March and actually sold it when it dropped. And right now it's trading at 17. It dropped a little bit after earnings. I, I think I could do covered calls on Box, put in $1,700, it's not a big risk, and then sell call options. So you can see the December 18 at a 17 strike, 
or maybe yeah 17 or 18 18 strike 20 cents that's not enough so if i go to january just to see what the call option is trading at so the last traded option was 75 cents so a month out but see there's also capital appreciation because 18 is about 63 cents higher than 17.37 so if we look at the return, possible return, seven, 75 cents divided by 17.37. So it's about a 4% return in one month just from the call premium and then another 4% probably from the capital appreciation. That's if box goes above 18 by January 15. So that's probably a play I want to do in my RESP or RRSP. So just find these low priced growth stocks and do covered calls on them as much as I, I would prefer to do covered calls on something like walmart and facebook which are much safer but as, as safe as they are sometimes they can drop 10 or 15 percent and then you're stuck holding the stock not being able to sell calls on it because the stock dropped too much and that 10 15 percent drop has a big impact on your portfolio so yeah that's what i'm holding right now in my quest trade portfolio i'm open to suggestions as always leave in the comment section below but i think you have a pretty good idea what my intention is with each account and if you have any questions leave in the comment section below like always if you can open an account with quest trade to trade on the stock market use my referral link below to get 50 dollars in free trades and if you enjoyed this video click the like button share with a friend and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching